Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Wheel, and I'm back. Back with another classic, another episode. Got my homie coming in. Been knowing this guy for, like, over... Years, man, we... Shout out to all the viewers. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's just something that I wanted to um, discuss today. Just about doing what's best for you and, and then just the importance of following your heart, you know, following your dreams, you know, chasing something that seemed like it's the supernatural Thing, but it's not. It's very important that we do what makes us happy. Okay, it works now. Here we go, man. Damn. Finally. I know, right? Man, I'm over here. As much as I be on Facebook, man, how can I not figure that out? Oh, man, it's all good, man. Um, you know, shit happens. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I'm like, damn, like, what the hell's wrong with my phone? But I think I got on a restriction on all, all the bullshit I be posting on Facebook. So I think they put me in jail. Man, I'm the, I'm like such a repeated offender on, on that stuff, man. Right, I should be on death row for Facebook. <laughs> shit, they should already throw me in, throw me in solitary for all the bullshit all, as many times as I've been in there. Facts, facts, man. <laughs> What's going on though? Man, nothing, man. Um, shoot, man, just really couldn't wait for this, man. You know, we ain't um, spoken a long time. Like I know, man. I have, I think I seen you one day, man. I was driving. I, I you were working at the hospital or something. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was cruising over that way, and I seen you walking one day. I was gonna holler at you. I'm like, damn, I had to go do something. And shit, I'm like, damn, that's Will right there, man. I ain't seen you in years. <laughs> yeah, I remember that shit. It was a while ago, though, man. Yeah, man, I still, I'm still doing my thing, man. But I'm just trying to, you know, really move to the next level. Um, I just know the importance of just waiting your turn and um, just paying dues, man. It's just people just um think like, oh my god, like you got a podcast, like you popping, you doing this, you doing that. I'm like, shoot, that's good, but like I won't the money, you know, I want to be rich, um, wouldn't be able to take care of my family, like, so, and I feel like that's what a man does, like, even though I don't have many children, like, I have a mother, I have a sister, she got kids and stuff like that, so until I'm able to get my own family, I want to look out for everybody else, because I'm, like, right on. I'm the only man left in my family, so. Right on. Pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It gets like that, man. As many kids as I got, I'm like, man, I got to figure out something to do. And I wish, you know what I'm saying, you know, we all could just, you know, just elevate in life. You know what I mean, man? Get, get, leave a legacy behind for our children or so they don't have to struggle. And, you know what I mean? Work, work a job that they hate. You know what I'm saying? You know, do damage to their mental health, that type of shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it sucks, man, that we can't. We can't do what we want for them sometimes, man. But, you know, these jobs out here, man, all you can do is just move from week to week. You know what I'm saying? Get by, get by, get by, man. And, you know, like you said, you want something better than that, which we all do, man. You know, I wish I could, man. I'm trying to figure it out. But, like, you got your platform right here, bro, for, for this podcast. And these and podcasts are popping up everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, podcasts is just what's up, man. Just hearing a peace of mind, how people think, and, you know, seeing how – a lot, a lot of celebrities and that are just like us. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, even though they got millions of dollars and shit, they're, they're going through a lot of things in their life that they can't explain or help. You know what I'm saying? So it brings it down to a level of us, too. You know what I'm saying? It's just the regular people out here trying to make ends meet. Oh, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's the survival of the Phyllis around here. So, but also, man, I just try not to... Um, have to snake anybody to the point of getting to the top because I'm, I'm a firmer believer that 
my hard work will speak for itself. And that's why mm -hmm. I was able to make it this far because I was just determined and just people just want the W before they take losses and you're going to take losses, you know, this yeah. is, I think life period, but yeah, I, but them losses is like lessons. They ain't really losses though. Like, no, man. they're not, man. <laughs> it makes you stronger, man. You know what I'm saying? It makes you, you know, a little bit tougher in this world, man, because this world is a lot of, a lot of snake shit going on. You know what I mean? People getting over on people just to get to the top, man. But, you know, like they say, the top becomes lonely sometimes, man. You know, you walk over a lot of people to get to where you're going. You might find yourself by yourself. And would you do all that shit for? You know what I'm saying? Where does all that money lie at? Where does everything start to come into to mind? Like, you know, why did I do this to get here to be alone? You know what I'm saying? You kind of forget the reason why you was trying to get there, you know? Yeah. And um, also, bro. I just wanted to ask you what brings you on here today because I know I reached out to you and stuff because um, I think, like, you know, we we, we was discussing um, just going through things by ourselves and shit and not really having people who can relate or people that just understands and stuff. So, but I can be paraphrasing so I just want you to um, just give like a little brief dis description of why you're here. Man, I just want to come up here, you know, just talk some shit with you, man. Talk about life, you know what I mean, bro? Like yeah. tell a couple of jokes, bullshit a little bit, but at the same time be serious, you know what I'm saying, man? Like seeing how far you come, seeing, you know, what you got going on your platform, bro. I could, all I could say is congratulations, bro. I be seeing you on there all the time. I watch them and check out, you know what I mean, people – getting on there and just explaining their point of view from their side of life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I thought I'd get on here and chop it up with you, man. Cause you know, I know you for a long time, bro. You know, we go back since middle school. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's to me, bro. I just want to get on here and just talk about life in general, man. You know, I see a lot of death going on around here, man. Makes me feel like, you know, as much as I see people going through, you know, your everyday bullshit, your everyday trouble, you know, you can't be worried about a lot of things, man, because you never know when you're going to be here again. Right. And it's crazy because, like, it just only takes a second to die, you know, and to live, it's like, um, it's, a, it's a lifetime because I think people just have difficulty making the, the minor adjustments, man. And yeah. And I was there because um, we pretty much went to school all the way from, I would say, sixth grade to 11th grade. So that's a stretch. But after I was transferred to the high, man, it, I had to really, like, learn everything again because the high and the hill is two different things, you know, two different. Two um, different worlds. Yeah, two different habitats, man. So I had yeah. to to a, to a lot of shit, and then I got dumbed down a lot, but I had to, you know, stay in them books and everything, because a lot of people don't really understand, like, from the, the Art the Hill education and the Saginaw High education, like, they, they didn't really give a fuck about us like that, so we had to... You know, business <laughs> moving is kind of just moving us along, man, kind of hurry up and finish your little year and get the hell on to the next year, next year, and then let's move, let's bring the other, the next kids coming in, you know? And, like, me, man, just me being a knucklehead and out there just, you know, all them times, man, I wish I could have, man, I don't know. I feel like I should have just, I wish I would have listened to a lot of people that told me a lot, of, you know, all the adults that were trying to look out for me, man, tell me to do better. And then I had potential just to do something, you know, and I wasted a lot of my time, man, chasing girls and bullshitting, you know what I'm saying, skipping school, you know, drinking and shit, man, and. Now I look at myself and I'm just like, man, like, damn, you know, I got all my kids and I tell them like, man, just stay in. That's all dad wants you to do. Stay in school and make something by yourself. You know, that's all I can ask for them, man, because like, at, you know, from my standpoint, I didn't really have nobody on my side telling me nothing. man. I just kind of was going through my own, just doing whatever I thought was necessary at the time, you know. 
Yeah, I just I just believe that, you know, making those mistakes um, young, I think it's the best way because, you know, you don't want to really look like a fool when you're making mistakes like in your 30s and 40s. And that's where you really feel stupid, like, damn. <laughs> right, because people are like, you grown, you should have known better and this and that, but... You know, for me, man, like I'm, I'm always gonna be me. I'm a little bit more serious, but you see how much I joke on the book, man. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like laughter is the best medicine. You know what I'm saying? In any situation, you know, you can sit there and laugh and crack a smile, man. And if I can make you laugh, bro, that's that's, you know, that that does something for me. You know what I'm saying, bro? Just to sit there and crack a smile, laugh and bullshit, and you know, let the good time save you, man. Don't let the the bullshit bring you down. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, no doubt. And and you always been funny, man. You always was taller than us and everything. It was hard to block your shot when we played basketball. Oh yeah, we used to be hooping in gym, man. You know, I see Mr. Cole at the bar, man, one day. A gym teacher? Yeah. I seen him at the bar and he looked at me, he was like, Delarosa and I said, What's up, man? I was like, How you doing, man? And he was talking to me for a minute, man. He gave me a hug and everything. He said, "Man, I'm, you know, I'm glad you're doing good. You look good, this and that." He was like, "You know, I remember you when you was in school." And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "I was a little, you know, hard headed then, whatever." I was like, "But you know, I try not to be like that no more. Like I'm grown. Just try to live my life, man. Stay out these streets and just, you know what I'm saying, like." He was like, "Oh, nice seeing you, man. Nice seeing you. I hope you still talk to people from back in school." And, I was like, yeah, I was like, I do, you know, occasionally, you know, Facebook is my little way to keep in touch, you know what I'm saying, with people that I, I grew up with or whatever, you know, opposed to going out and being out and shit sometimes. Yeah, that's good, man. He still look the same. Huh? Does he still look the same, Mr. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah, bro. He look, I, I see, as soon as I looked at him, because he was saying, he was like, man, duh, and I said, dang, Mr. Carlson, what's up, man? <laughs> He's just talking to me and shit. I was like, I remember you beat me in basketball one time. He started laughing. He's like, I, he's, I'll still beat you. I said, hell no, you, you must be drunk. <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. But also, it's just a blessing to be able to walk in to people from the past. Like, because like you said, man, like people dropping like flies. You know, man, man, what, man? Like, flies, man. It, it, it's sad, bro. It really is, man. Like, I feel for anybody that loses somebody, man. You know, I know how I felt when I lost my homie, Notch. I don't know if you remember Notch. Santo, remember? Yeah, yeah that, when after I lost, you know, like, I talked to him all the time, man. When, when he passed, I just, you know, death makes you appreciate life. You know what I'm saying? You know, that shit's right around the corner for all of us. Yeah, and I noticed um, that you have a, a older brother too. Yeah, and y'all just inseparable, and it was crazy because like when I saw y'all picture when y'all took together, um, kind of like hit a tear, man. <laughs> it hit a nerve for me, man, because I don't have my brother no more, and. And a lot of us, um, we really don't understand the significance that older siblings play in our lives. And I don't know who's, I, I think he's older than you or you older yeah, than Yeah, he's two years older than me, yeah. Okay, well, it's just, um, no matter how old we get, man, like our big brothers, big sisters, man, like, they still hold a special place in our hearts because they took care of us. They was there for us. Yeah, when we started. Right. And I still like struggle with that even like to this day, it's been seven years since you've been gone. So I ain't really um Did he go to school with us, bro? No, he was, ooh, he was 13 years older than me, so. Oh, shit. Damn, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, did I ever meet him? Damn, that's crazy. I'm sorry about that, man. No, you good, man, but it's just, like, people don't really sit back and think about that, man, because we man, get older, and we get, you know, we got families, we get kids and stuff like that, but I always just try to 
be a better brother. Um, try not to really be disrespectful or try to, I, I've been a, a really like the initiator, like as far as like negotiating and like, look, I ain't trying to dis- be mean or disrespect you, sis, or because it's it just me and my sister now. So, mm-hmm. so I just be trying to do my best, man, but also try to do my purpose as well because she still kind of see me as her little brother, but she don't see me as the man or the businessman, entrepreneur, stuff like that. So I can't make time for it like that. But I just been trying my best. And, um, but what I wanted to ask you, does, um, you know, your brother, Dave, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Does he play a important role in your life even to this day? Man, we actually just had got into it like a couple months ago. We went out to Texas, and we really haven't talked that much since. We had went to go help my mom move because she was living in San Antonio for a little bit. So she just flew us out there to go help her move some stuff. It was more of her just to have us come down there and hang out with her too, though, because it wasn't too much shit to move. But mm-hmm. we ended up getting into it on some junk shit, man. But, you know, a big part of me – you know, I I, I want to be the bigger man about it, man. But I feel like there were some things that we were had going on that just weren't – had to be spoken on, man. Like, we were just bumping heads at the time, man, just randomly, you know. It's like petty shit, man. You know, and for you to say that now, man, it just makes me realize, like, you know, time is not a, you know, a guaranteed thing we have. You know, and now that you say that you brought up your brother, man, I'm thinking about his ass right now, and I'm just like, nah, I just want, you know, I should just reach out to him and talk to him and shit because, you know, I'm over here talking about death and shit, but look, I'm over here acting like, uh, you know, I'm trying to be all tough and that, oh, I'm not going to talk to him, you know, like, fuck that, you know. Man, I'm telling you, um, from my experience, bro, me and my brother was beefing for three years. We didn't talk. We didn't come around each other, and then he passed away and then when he passed away I didn't think it was going to affect me that much but then I started to have that guilt and that guilt really was like my I felt like it was my punishment for not making things right because I could have um ended it but it's just we both stubborn and shit exactly man like I'm I'm stubborn as, as hell man especially when it comes to like me trying to make a point, you know, I'm just like, you know, I can toughen out as long as you can, you know, I don't have to speak to you, but, you know, we've been through so much shit, man, like, it's not even funny, like, Mm -hmm. just, like, silly shit, you know what I mean, but we were always there for each other, man, had each other's back, like, like, it wasn't even a question, you know what I'm saying, like, I didn't even have to worry if he was gonna have my back or not, or, you know, it was already in, you know, kind of embedded in us, like, you know, I'm gonna be there for you no matter what, you know, whatever you're going through. Yeah. But look at me over here acting like an asshole, though. I, mean, I don't know, man. Man, it's all good, bro. Like, don't beat yourself up. Like, shit happens, man. We, bro, and it only comes out of me when I, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there, you know, I'm chilling, vibe, listening to some music, I start drinking, and then here I go with my bullshit. I'm like, damn, you know, I'm being silly, man. I'm acting like a fucking kid. Like, I'm not addressing this shit like a man should, you know what I'm saying? Sit up there and just apologize and leave it at that. Like, even if he doesn't want to talk to me still, it's just, you know, just at least say my piece and let, let it be. But, yeah, you know, man, like I, like I said, man, I just got that stubborn ass, you know, attitude and I don't know, man, it's tough. Like you said, man, like, you know, bringing that into perspective about the fact that your brother passed away and it's like, damn, like, you know, I would never want no shit like that to happen to my brother. You know what I mean, man? And not be able to say sorry. Yeah, and I just try to um, help people with that because I'm always the one that people call whenever they need uh, some type of advice as far as siblings goes, man. But no matter what happens or what, no matter what, bro, like it's always going to be something. But it's just. Yeah, man. And we just got to address it. You know what I'm saying? We're too grown for like. Little as petty, you know, arguments and not talk for years and that type of shit. Like, I need to, you know, at least give it a chance to talk about it. It's already been a couple months, you know what I'm saying? I should just sit there and talk about it like a man and let it be known that I was offended or whatever the situation was, you know, and then just get past it. 
Yeah. But like I said, man, I'm fucking hard headed, bro. I got, you know, I be on some bullshit sometimes. And I know it's me, man. I know it's me. Like, I, I would never sit up here and act like I'm, the, I don't got some shit going on in my head to where I feel like I want to, you know, get on somebody's ass or whatever the situation is, you know. So I, I just need to address that with him, and hopefully I'll do it today. Yeah, man, this is, you know, nowadays people allow their feelings to be communication. And it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to feel some type of way. But then communication has to play a huge role because it's like um, it's two parties. You know, you can t s explain your side, then he can explain his side. But then it could be a um, a resolution in the middle middle of all. Right. Or even agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? Just be like, you know, it ain't shit. You know what I mean? You know, some people, like, I, it's funny to me, man. Like, I, I see so many people, like, pride themselves on being petty and cold-hearted and shit. And I'm like, man, sit your ass the fuck down, like, Ain't nobody trying to be around your miserable ass. Like, shut up. But you know what I'm saying? Then when you really, like, really, when you look at it, you're, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm being petty too in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't even talk to my brother, have a sit down and just tell, you know, you know what, man? Like, forget that shit. You know what I mean? Forget it. Whatever we had going on, like, I don't even care about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's sit here and talk and bullshit and get right back to just being brothers. You know what I'm saying? Instead of, carrying that burden around with me, like, oh, fuck him, you know, forget him, or I don't care, or, you know, because I do care, bro, like, but I just tend to, like, get in my own way sometimes, you know? Yeah, and, and, and again, bro, it's just one of those things, man, it's just, it's going to take time, nothing happens overnight, but it just takes time, it takes patience, and when we love people, man, it's just all about trying to um, understand them, you know, and just right. try to work things out. You compromise. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm compromising. And, and I got to compromise a lot because I have to make sure that my nieces and nephew is straight. So I got to compromise a lot. Even when I want to speak my mind, I just leave it alone because, you know, you ain't about to get me to your level, like, regardless. Right on. Yeah, right. I could dig it. Like, me being married now, too, man, like, there's so much shit that, I, you know, like, bothers me with my wife, you know, and I'm just like, man, like, damn, you know, but I love her to death, man. Like, there ain't no, I'm a, you know, down your type shit, I'm a leave or anything like that, bro. We just got to learn to, like, either walk away, address it, or just, you know what I'm saying, don't even speak on it, you know what I'm saying, because what's the outcome of that shit? You know, sit there and fucking talk shit to each other in front of the kids or whatever the situation is. You know, and that shit's dead. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not with that shit, man. Because I grew up like that. You know what I'm saying? Watching my parents go at it over God knows what. You know what I'm saying? So what the what do I look like doing that shit in front of my kids? You know what I'm saying? Right. But I just think when it comes to families and stuff like that, bro, like, it just, when you lose one person, it just seemed like it's not the same anymore because I had to really um, step up a lot. You know, I had to pick up the pieces because everybody was just in turmoil and just really was trying to do the best they can and stuff like that. And, and yes, people chose sides and stuff like that. But as far as me, I just wanted to try to just keep the glue or hold it together, but eventually everything just evaporated in front of my eyes. And the hardest thing that you gonna have to go through is the stuff that you can't control, you know? And that's the thing that hurts the most when you can't control it, when you always been like the fixer, you always been the helper and- Yeah, and like that's what I'm saying, like, you know, what's the outcome after you know, fighting and arguing, all that other shit. Like, I, I like to look at things a lot different now just for the simple fact that, man, like, growing up the way I grew up and all this other shit, like, I used to try to play that, my little street shit or whatever, man, and it, it didn't get me nowhere, bro, but made me more angry, you know what I'm saying? 
and then look at my family like I, I pushed away from them just for the simple fact that I just, you know, had that fuck everybody mentality, you know what I'm saying? And that shit just started from way younger. And then that shit just grew into something more that I couldn't even handle, man. So you're right about the family thing, man. Like, I can't even say it right now, bro. Like, I'm just like, you know, it'd be me, man. Like, I'm the one that be distancing myself away from the people that love me or that took care of me and shit when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here trying to preach and shit about, you know, all this other shit. And it just makes me kind of feel stupid, bro, in a way, because... I shouldn't be acting like that, man. Like, that's why I put up on Facebook the other day. I'm just like, you know, there's no problem with me, with anybody. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, mm -hmm. I love who loves me. You know what I'm saying? If you ever felt like we had a problem, like, it ain't a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I like to look at things completely different now, bro. Just the simple fact that people are just, like, dying, bro. Like, left and right. Like, celebrities, people that are close to us, people that we know, bro. Like, seeing people go live and Snapchat and just showing people's death, like, it's like, damn, man, that could be my dumb ass. And I never would have told the people that I feel like, you know, people that I'm like, really hurt, you know, I wish I could just tell them, like, I was sorry, bro, and that, you know, like, at the time when I probably did it, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, you know, especially when I was younger, man. Like, I didn't have a care in the world, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's deep, man. That's deep because... We don't get apologies like that no more, man. People just distance themselves from us or they go start hanging out with your ops and shit like that after they wronged you. But it takes a real man, just a real um, delicate soul to admit his wrongs, man. And that's why, yeah. I, that's why I can't even say like, oh, um, I feel your pain because you know, you're, not that, you're not that toxic to identify these traits that you have and should we all have them you know i i have my moments man when i just like be mad and and this and that but then i also just analyze what this person talking about or it's just try to just um put myself in their shoes it may take me take me a minute but at least like i will like do the work in my mind yeah like, and you ain't got to carry around that that negative shit with you. You ain't got to walk around all day and being like, you know, they piss me off, fuck them. You know, whenever I see them, we got to look some type of way. We got to be on bullshit, whatever the situation is. And it's like, to me, like, why though, bro? And it's easier just to be like, you know what, man, I'm sorry. Even if you don't accept it, like, it's all good, you know? Like, it's all good. You ain't, you ain't going to hear nothing on my end. I'm not going to run around town talking about we too grown for that shit. You yeah. know, because once you, once you stop talking to people, once that negative energy is in the air, like, the years start flying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might have got into it one of your friends and not seen him for over two years or some shit and be like, damn, bro, like, I don't even know what the fuck we was even arguing about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, like I said, bro, I don't have a problem with a motherfucker in this world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to live my life, bro, and just take care of my kids and, you know, be with my wife, bro, and you know, just enjoy the time I'm here, bro. Because, like I said, man, I'm I'm here for a good time, not a long time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's and that's dope, man. Because it's just different when it's people that you love, man. Because if it's somebody that didn't hold no value to you, man, like we can bounce that, we can shake that off and shit. But when it's somebody that you care about, it just hits differently, man. And, and you just want to make sure that that person is valued and appreciated. I mean, that's just all of us. You know, we want to be appreciated too. But I think just us as men, it's just a lot difficult because people just think that we're just supposed to just take whatever. But, you know, we have... Yeah, our, that, I, and I can understand that, bro. Like, I I pride myself on being, like, an alpha male, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to take no shit. Yeah. But at the same time, bro, like, man, I'm not that guy. Like, I I love everybody. I like to talk to motherfuckers. I like to have a good time. I like to crack a joke. You know, I, I like to, you know what I'm saying, just be positive, you know what I'm saying? Like, whenever somebody's down, bro, like... Man, fuck that. Let's go do something. Let's get up out of here. Let's go, you know what I'm saying? Let's we can't sit here and dwell and sit in the dark and act like something's gonna change from us just sitting here 
to being upset, but we got to get out here in the world and lighten that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to look at life from – there's. it's easier to look at, like, everything's all wrong, but, man, you better start looking at the good things in life, which I have been doing, man, a lot lately. Like, it's just – you know, like I said, man, after my homie passed, bro, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it, man. Like, it, it really doesn't really hit me unless I see something on Facebook or, you know, my memories pop up. I'm just like, damn, man, bro, it's really gone. You know what I mean, bro? I'll never, come, I'll never, bro, I'll never see him in a million years. You know what I'm saying? I'll never see him, I'll never see him again, bro. And that shit hurts, man. Like, it really does, man, because that was my guy. Like, we, you know, we went, we go back. Like rocking chairs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's crazy, man. You know, and then, like, me sitting up here dwelling over, like, a little silly-ass situation. Like like you said, bro, with my brother, and I'll, and I'll say it, it was silly. Mm -hmm. Silly as shit, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, and I can't even tell you what it was really about now that I'm thinking about it. And now I feel like a super asshole. Man. And I, I'm glad that we're doing this episode, man, because I think... Um, it just was necessary because I always just just try to tell people, man, to make things right, man, because you just never know, bro. Like, because I had no idea um, that was going to happen because I had plans that day. But one thing about plans is that they are always changing. So, man, so you for real, never, bro, you just never know, man. Like, you could be, you know waking up in a good mood and then you go on a bed crying your eyes out so i know that's why i be telling my wife all the time like man life is so unexpected but at the same time do we really want to know we don't bro you know as a people we we would like to think that we want to figure out our future and this and that like but things change you know the only thing that's going to stay the same in life is change bro you know what i'm saying like everything changes you know what i'm saying like i never thought later on in my life i'll have as many kids as i do bro you know, I live in Chesney. Like, I be walking around here like, what the fuck am I doing out here, man? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, man, bro, you it still hits me sometimes. I get outside and I'm like, man, what the hell? Like, you know, I see some homies back from Saginaw. They're like, bro, like, where you live at? I'm like, Chesney. They're like, yeah, right. Shut up, man. You lying. You know where the hell you could be living in Chesney. I'm like, yeah, man. Like, I met my wife and moved over here, man, and said, never look back. I be like, fuck Saginaw sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I really do, bro. Like, cause Sag I love Saginaw. Like, there's a lot of good people there, man. But I'm not willing to bet my kids' future on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Or mine. Like, I'd rather be outside, bro. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you, man. And and I'm working on getting out of here too, man. It just, um, I feel like I'm still needed here, cause it's crazy. Cause people like to say, like, man. You need to get out of there. You ain't, you ain't getting no support. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. But it's a reason why I'm here. It's a reason why I came back. I just want to just do my um my the work because it's always people. You know, I don't knock people for leaving, but it's always people that. No hell no, bro. I would never like, bro. So I mean, you know, all my friends stay there. My family's there, there, man. But. I see so much knuckle shit, knuckle shit, you know, shit going on, bro, and it's just like, damn, like, it was like that when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? It was like that before I was older, you know what I'm saying? And it's the same shit everywhere you go. Like, I'll go out to the store just to grab me something to drink or something, and, you know, I got young dudes looking at me like they want to do something to me. I'm like, damn, bro, like, I'm just trying to grab me something and get my ass back in the car and shit. Like, leave me alone, shit. Oh, me too, man. And it's just like, I'm not a threat. Like, I'm just here to get something to drink. I'm here to play the lottery. I ain't trying to. Yeah, exactly, bro. And I'm like, they looking screwed up as hell. Like, like, I'm their worst enemy. I'm like, bro, I'm not that guy. Like, I'm I'm chilling, man. Like, I just want to just grab my little bottle, a couple black and miles, and get the fuck on. Shit, I ain't trying to bother nobody in this goddamn world. Me either, man. And, and it's just, I want to. Just, you know, help the kids out, man, and and just really, you know, speak about just the injustice here, man, because I just think that, like, when we watch the news and stuff like that, and, you know, they paint our city like a Graceland, and, and, it, and it's really not. Like, I feel like the local news and this and that really don't do the much reporting that 
we need to do it because it's just they show what they want to show and stuff yeah. like that and create. They only address um, they only address like the negative shit about Saginaw opposed to like a yeah. lot of positive shit that people try to do and they can't get no type of you know funding or nothing like that. But like some people are really trying to invest into the community. But then you got people that talk shit about, like, you know, I seen somebody was saying something about, it was like a couple months ago about Lamar Woodley school, like, mm -hmm. he didn't hurry up and go fix it, this and that. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up, man. Like, nah, I'm like, let give him a chance, though. But all you can do is just talk shit, though. You know what I'm saying? And down, down somebody that's trying to invest into the community when we're losing schools left and right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's just not, um, no opportunities here, man. And we really, because um, I'm working with like a couple people and we just really want to try to get some type of organization going to for the kids, man. And just try to create more um, best and brightest because we don't need um, a local news segment just they show like 15 seconds on TV mm -hmm. about the yeah. best and brightest, but we really need for them to be um, efficient for a long time. So they, so they would know, and then they can grow up and, you know, pass it on. It's all about. Exactly, them. man. Give these kids something else to do besides run around and act a fool, man. You know what I'm saying? Give, give them, you know, have more, more gyms open just for kids to go in there and hoop, man, because I see little kids, you know, just want to play basketball inside, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, supervised, they don't want to be around no damn knuckleheads, like, taking their ball and all types of other shit, like, man, and when I, I used to work at the YMCA, all I seen was, you know, and I would let young dogs come in there, man, because all they want to do is hoop. Mm -hmm. But they talking about paying kids, paying $15 to come in for a fair day, but I'm like, man, hell, like, they, some of these kids don't got that shit. All they got is, you know what I'm saying, some of them just got basketball in, in their blood. They want to hoop. They want to find somewhere. To, they don't want to be out here in no damn streets. They want to just mind their own and play a couple games, go take their ass home. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just crazy, bro. Like, cause when I tell people that I know from out of town, I tell them, like, we the most segregated city that you will ever see. But they don't be believing me. They be like, for real? I'm like, yeah, for real. Like, it's segregated. And and how could we be a better Saginaw if we still keeping up the same bullshit? Like, we got to really all come together. Like, um, instead of trying to gentrify our neighborhoods, y'all need to come to our neighborhoods. Because y'all safe in our neighborhoods, then we safe in your neighborhoods. So yeah. what about just, you know, coming through and getting to know us, you know. Yeah, right. Problems and finding out our mishaps or whatever, like, and we can do the same thing if we really trying to have a better community. Um, yeah. Let's stop the bullshit. Let's stop the, right. the gatekeeping, the um, discrimination, the uh, racial profiling. Yeah. Like that, then we will, we will all be good because we all got to coexist you know we don't yeah exactly we got to find a way to evolve as a people and as a group instead of just trying to outdo each other man because like every time i go out of town like somebody will start talking to me and i'm like bro what are you talking to me for why why are you talking to me mm -hmm. but they're like no i don't mean no harm bro i'm just you know i'm like man from where i'm from you can't even talk to a motherfucker that you don't know because they'll look at you like like what you want man you don't know what you need some or you got a problem or some shit and Everybody always tells me that. They're like, bro, like, it ain't like that over here. They, you know, people ain't like it. Like, I went out of town last weekend, and then um, a dude was to give me directions because I had got lost and shit. And so I went and told my homeboy. He was like, he was talking to you, huh? And I said, yeah. And he was like, bro, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, motherfucker, going to look at you like, what you need? You know what I'm saying? Like, get out of my face or whatever the situation is, man. Yeah, that's, that's sad, man, because... It really is, man. It really is for real. <laughs> but I'm a good hard to do, man, because a lot of people come up to me a lot, um, just telling me like you're doing a good job and I signed my first autograph a couple of days ago, bro. That shit felt so good just made you feel like the man, huh? <laughs> yeah, bro, cause it's like 
when you don't um when you feel like you don't be acknowledged and stuff like that and i really do this from the heart like i never really just want praise or recognition but i just want to do a good job and when you get acknowledged for having it that type of work ethic and that type of attitude upon yourself, man. It's nice to to have somebody tell you. Be like, appreciated. Yeah, that you're doing a good job. Because a lot of people, man, like a couple years ago when that George Floyd stuff happened and everybody was having a little protest and this and that, and they was expecting me to, to come out there Cause you know they like, oh, you missed the Black History. Why you ain't out there protesting? I'm like, cause it's night, it ain't 1958 or 1964, motherfucker. Yeah, right. We all don't have to be outside to care, you know. Right. Go out there and stand in front of the dogs and shit. Like you got a whole different plat, you got a whole different platform and to speak from. You know what I'm saying? And get through to you know, especially the people that you already know. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to just talking in the damn air. Like that's why. Like, it is cool, bro, that you have your pedestal. You got this going on for yourself, bro, where you can sit at the crib and it don't have to be like, you know, because some people be ready for physical altercation over a disagreement, you know what I'm saying? So you sitting at the crib telling the person about themselves and they can either listen or they can't, you know what I mean? Like, it ain't going to, you know, I hope I, I don't think it would move you any type of way. Like, bro, if you're not trying to hear what I'm trying to say, just keep scrolling in, you know what I'm saying? Like, keep going. But if you want to hear some empowering shit, if you want to sit here and we can be on the same page and move as a unit, then we can talk then. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, people, it's, you know, it's just about divide and conquer, bro. Like nobody, everybody's points of views. We can't just be on one page. Everybody's got to down the next person or they know more or it, it's ridiculous, bro, in a sense that people are like that these days. You know what I'm saying, man? You can't, I can't say shit. I can't get on Facebook and be like, the sky is blue. Somebody's going to disagree with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, sky ain't blue. I'm like, shit, it's purple. You know what I'm saying? It was it was pink the other day. It was, you know what I'm saying, bro? And it's just like, it's crazy, man. Like, it really is. It, it really is. Hell yeah, bro. And um, this, this this one story, um, Ida B. Wells, um, she was like a journalist. You know what I'm saying? She, she wrote stories and stuff like that. But she exposed the lynching and made that nationwide because people in the north didn't know what lynching was, like, because it was a, a down south thing. Yeah, it was a free, we, they were free up north, yeah, yep. Yeah, so they um was able to do something about it. Um, They had passed this anti-lynching law, which um didn't get the full attention or exposure because it was like over a hundred years ago. But other than that, um, like she did that from her desk. Frederick Douglass did what he did, you know, from talking to abolitionists and stuff like that. So people just think that you got to be outside to make moves and you don't. And those same people that criticize me for not going outside, man, they ain't, doing shit now you know it was just all a phase you know and they're trying to push you up and then we're on to the next story we're on to the next big big uh news report or whatever whatever it is man and that shit doesn't sit well with me man because we will we're so we live in the moment so much but we don't think about like you know all the past shit that's happened people tend to forget you know as soon as the next big story comes up on news and shit and i feel like that makes you kind of not like narrow-minded but at the same time your attention span is like oh this or this and i'm like bro there's so much more going on in the world that we need to address that you know it's funny bro that you can just throw something else on the tv and then people just follow it follow it follow it and i'm like man like you know i had told a dude about himself the other day about that britney garner you know situation and you know, oh, she messed up, Russia, this and that. I'm like, bro, but that's a little e extreme, though, you know, to put her in prison, regardless of law. Like, you know, law doesn't make it right, you know what I mean? We used to have slaves out here in our country, and that shit was, you know what I'm saying, that was law. I'm like, you know, we, we take for we take it law as being right, or is this, that's why we have to do things the way we do, because, you know, we won't be able to live civilized, and that's bullshit, man. Like that, some of the laws that are put in place, bro, are complete bullshit. Like, yeah. 
you know, it's it's a matter of a game. Like even when I tell people about like cops and stuff, like bro, it's a business. Like the police say that shit is a business, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not about you know what's right and what's wrong, and that's we got to keep motherfuckers in jail. We got to keep people going through the court system, all types of shit. You know, and people don't care about that kind of shit because they're so blindsided to like irrelevant shit. You know what I'm saying? When Kim Kardashian is doing what, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, bro. Hey, you hit the nail on the head with that because I just think that you know people don't want to be consistent, like. They know if they speak up, they gonna have to show they <laughs> show show they receipts or pull their card on it, you know. But right, I'm always been consistent just with what we need to do, just really um, sticking to the like history segments and stuff like that. And because I really want to educate not just my people, but you know, people in our own. Um, age demographic, man, because yeah. a, a lot of our, you know, I ain't gonna lie, man, a lot of our friends that we went to school with stupid, bro, so. <laughs> yeah, they are, man, they're so, but that just comes with, bro, like, just everyday life, like, they don't give, they either don't give a fuck, or they're too woke for me, like, some dudes are too woke for me, man, like, bro, I understand being woke, and I understand there's a hidden agenda in this world, man, but some of you dudes are too woke for me, man. I can't even have a conversation with you. Like, you know, we can talk about if you open to talking about it, but I like I don't get on Facebook to talk about politics. I won't talk about like, you know, religion, bro. Like I just there's certain things I just stay away from. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't talk to everybody about that kind of shit. You know what I mean? It's gonna be a huge debate. Something's going to be wrong. You know, we're going to get into throwing, you know, insults to each other. Like, man, like, I'm not, I'm up for a good debate, bro. If you want to talk about some shit, hit me up. Let me know something. You know what I mean? We can have a a very intense debate about life, whatever you want to talk about. But, bro, be, don't be one-sided, though. You know what I'm saying? Try to see it from my point of view. But you might step to me already having your mind made up. So what the hell are we having this conversation for then? You know what I'm saying? And I, and I feel like... A point of a debate is just having a um, purpose behind it. And yeah, to get some insight into how you think, bro. Like, I want to know how you think. I want to know what you think of Blake. I'm not just going to be like, no, bro, no, no, that ain't. No, man, like, let me hear it. I want to hear what you got to say. Like, let's listen to it. I'm not going to call you wrong, bro. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, shit, some people live in their own world, so they don't, you can't tell them shit. No. Of course not, man, and. And I realize that everybody wakes up at a different time, so I'm not going to just um, berate anybody because everybody has their own perception and they entitled for the, to that, man. So we just have to just all just realize that we all need each other, man, regardless of what, how we feel, how we think, you know, how we just visualize things. But we just need to just all. Um, just love and respect and help one another, bro, because we all we got, man, and it's it's power in numbers, man, so. It really is, man. You're right about that. But like I said, you know, you know, divide and conquer is a part of the plan, bro, that's in input in this society, bro. Like, nobody wants to help the next man. Nobody, you know, we got people out here that care about animals, which is cool and shit, but you got people laying on the side of the road, you know what I'm saying? You got yeah. Kids laying on the side of the road. You got kids in other countries, like, but, you know, some people seem like that's too far fetched, bro. But shit, it's right in your own city, though. It's right around the corner from you. You know what I mean? And nobody wants to help them because they don't want to help themselves. But some of them don't know what to do. You know what I mean? Some of them are just fucked up in their head. You know what I'm saying? Like, seem like that dude, Delonte West, the one that used to play for Cleveland, and he's his mind is gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he, he once upon a time, you know what I'm saying? Open and, and the NBA had money and shit and like what happened, bro? Like what happened? And people are like, "Oh, that's your fault." Or you was talking LeBron James, mama. Or, you know what I mean, bro? Like what the fuck does it got to do with? You know what I'm saying? Like him being messed up in his goddamn head. He deserves that shit. Like it's crazy, bro. Exactly. Like no one really just take that to consideration that he had a nervous breakdown or a mental breakdown. Nobody. Yeah, knows. man, bro, you don't know what happened to him, bro. Somebody could have slipped him some shit. Somebody could have, but, you know, then it becomes a joke, and everybody laughs at that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? 
it becomes all oh, he was fucking LeBron James. LeBron did something to him. And I'm like, bro, that shit ain't even like you know. And I'm you know me, I'm the most joking person you'll ever meet, bro. But at the same time, some shit is not funny, bro. Like some shit is, it isn't meant to be a goddamn joke. You know what I mean? And I don't know, man. Yeah, it just just people just think that they're invincible, that it can't happen to them. But yeah, that it won't happen to them. It can. <laughs> Hell yeah, that shit can. Hell yeah, that shit, you know, and I, and I pray, you know what I mean, you know, karma, whatever you believe in, man, you better hope that motherfucker don't come knocking at your goddamn door because shit, like some, you know, some people got it coming though, bro, like legit have it coming with all their bullshit and all their funny ways and down in the next person and shit, that's going to be your ass pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I just treat people with respect, man, and Treat them the way I want to be treated, cause exactly until they disrespect you, and then it's like fuck you. You know what I mean? We move on right. to the next shit. Right. I got my friends. I ain't worried. I ain't looking for a friend in this damn world. Shit, I already got my friends and my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm opening to meet new people, man. But you know, don't come around here with no bullshit, man. Like, don't come out here like, you know, I'm I'm about like, man, living a better life, man. Thanks, me too, bro. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, um, everything about to die over here. So if you have any last final thoughts, bro, feel free. No, you're good, bro. I appreciate the, I appreciate it, man. You know, I'm glad you let me on, man. Talk my shit for a minute. <laughs> you know, hear some, you know what I mean? My point of view, heard your point of view going things. And I just appreciate it, bro. Real shit, bro. Love you, bro. Man, I love you too, man. Anytime you need to come, want to come back, bro. Let me know, man. We go have to do like a just online, just face to face one one day, man. Just oh yeah, for sure, bro. And I would have came, but shit, I'm I, like I said, bro. I live in Chesney, and I'm out here just chilling. Like I, I got the kids in school and shit, man. I mean, I gotta go get them some stuff for school, so that's why I just. But I'm for sure gonna pull up on you, man. I'll bring a little bottle or something, man. Okay, bro, man. Let me know, <laughs> man. Good see. Hey, you. for sure, bro. Once I get this Facebook shit situated, we will, bro. <laughs> All right, bro. Man, have a good All night, right. man. All right, peace out, bro. You too. All right, peace. Yeah. peace.